Hello guys, welcome back to this video on the CCMP security exam. And this CCMP security is for the SIMOS or the CIMOS or CIMOS, whatever you want to call it. And we are going to go over something in specific. We already went over GetVPN. We did um, implement IPsec with iGration 1 and iGration 2. Now we are going to talk about, before we implement, we got to talk about um, DMVPN, how and spoke and spoke to spoke on both IPv4 and IPv6. So we are going to talk about DMVPN before we start configuring this. So we need to know uh, what the DMVPN is before we can configure, right? Because otherwise you're going to be configuring and you're not going to know what you are configuring. Um, and if you don't know what you are configuring and how it works, um, then it's going to be hard to troubleshoot this issue. So let's go ahead and start with this. Um, I have a slideshow that I put together for you guys. Let's go ahead and start with this. DMVPN. So um, there is a problem with the site to site uh, VPN. And as a site to site VPN solution, primarily used, um, it's used for connecting main office with multiple branch offices for a unique IP subnet. The configuration for the network admin gets complex as the number of branch offices increases. So every time you like let's say you have the main office right here and then you have more branches that keep adding so you keep buying more and more divide uh, multiple um, the multiple of uh, branches what's going to happen is that you need to configure um, every single time you buy a, a branch you need to configure a site-to-site -site VPN in connection to the main office and that that takes a lot of time because you need to configure like if you have 20 branches you need to configure 20 different um, site to site VPN connection um, between all those branches and maintaining a topology like that with crypto maps and pre shared keys on each device becomes a full time job as well. So you're gonna, probably going to need to hire somebody else just to do um, to maintain just, just your crypto maps and the pre shared keys. Um, for that network itself, so it is not a really good solution. Whenever so site to site VPN is not a, a scalable. It's not a really good solution whenever you um, have multiple branches, right? So a solution for this is uh, DMVPN and so DMV, DMVPN um, to the rescue, right? <laughs> so DMVPN comes to the rescue by providing the same output while keeping a low cost. Less configuration, complexity, and increased flexibility of the overall network design. In DMVPN, one device acts as a central part of the whole VPN topology while remaining while the remaining ones acts as a client to the central device for fetching information regarding VPN connection and destination address for intended connections. And the central device is known as the hub, while the remaining devices are called spoke. Normally headquarters Edge device is configured as the hub while the branch offices device is configured as a spoke. Um, and there's a couple ways that you could deploy um, a DMVPN. The one is the DMVPN hub and spoke and use for interconnecting headquarters with a branch. In this mode of deployment, traffic between branches offices flow through a hub as there is not direct communication between different spokes. And in a DMVPN spoke to spoke, it is used for a branch to branch direct communication. It should not be noted that hub and spoke is initially generated. Full or partial mesh network will be created once traffic from one spoke to some other spoke is generated. And so at first, when you configure uh, spoke to, so this is for mostly for um, DMVPN phase Two, yeah, phase two, I believe, is the one that only do hub and spoke. So all the traffic is going to go to the hub before it goes to a spoke. So if, if, if there's two spokes out there and they want to talk to one another, they need to use the hub, the hub for that. But in phase three, they are able to do, uh, they're able to communicate with a spoke to spoke directly if they have to. And that is the other deployment, which is spoke to spoke, but the first ping, the first communication that is out there is going to have to go to the hub. And then after the hub makes the connection between the two spokes, 
um, then they're going to be able to form a tunnel between this a spoke to spoke and then they're going to be able to um, talk with one another okay and the members are defined as um, the dmvp and hope is um, actually called the next hub server the nh the nhs and you're going to you're going to see that in that configuration and the dmvpn spokes are the next hub clients and here's the hope and spoke um, topology right now right here as you can see right here the spoke and the hub how they are connected with each other so all the traffic on dmvpn phase two all the traffic is going to be help and spoke so if the spoke wants to talk to the if this remote office wants to talk with this remote office the traffic is going to have to go to the hub and then the hub is going to send it to the spoke but if you are configuring the mvp in phase three um the initial traffic is going to be sent to the hub and then to the spoke and then after that both of them are going to create their own tunnel like you can see right here and this is a spoke to spoke and this is a spoke to hub right here okay and also, um, another fact is, whenever you are configuring um, DMVPN, the spoke do not need to have, um, they, they don't need to have a static public IP address. They can have a um, dynamic public IP address. And whenever it changes, the spoke is just going to tell the hub that its IP address has changed. And so for this spoke, the only one that needs to have a static public IP address is the hub, right? because whenever the spoke wants to communicate, it's going to use the same IP address all the time. So the hub needs to have a static public IP address, but the spokes do not need to have a static IP address, which saves um, money. And the benefits of using DMVPN, is simplify hub configuration on a one tunnel interface, um, which is called the um, MGRE, needs to be created. Um, dynamic IP address support for spoke devices. So the spoke devices use NSRP protocol to make communication with other spokes. It is not mandatory to have a static IP address on spoke, just like I said before. And lower configuration and administration. It's also one of the other benefits of the MVPN. Um, and there's an option for secure implementation by using IPsec, which we are going to see on a later on video, where we are going to attach IPsec to our DMVPN. <coughs> And independent from which model is implemented, the MVPN creation always involves the following components or control planes. So you always need to have a MGRE tunnel created. You need to have the next hybrid solution protocol based on dynamic routing configured and IPsec based MGRE tunnel protocol. Um, you don't really need to add IPsec. So this is now, this is not really, it doesn't always involve IPsec. It's, it is optional. I need to remove that from this PowerPoint. <laughs> so, and what is NHRP? So, the next HAP resolution protocol is an extension of the ATM ARP routing mechanism that is sometimes used to improve the efficiency of routing computer network traffic over non-broadcast multiple access networks, or the MBMA networks. And there are <clears throat> a couple of DMVPN phases. Um, in phase one, you are only, I believe, in phase one, it's only spoke to spoke. So they do not have a hub there. That's phase one. In phase two, you are going to have a spoke to hub, hub configuration um, there. And in phase three, you are going to have um, spoke to spoke and spoke to hub, hub configuration. So you're going to see all three on phase three. Um, and you're going to add um, IP redirects and also IP shortcut, which you're going to see on the later on video where I'm going to be configuring different phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. And IPsec is optional. But for FlexVPN, which is phase four, it requires you to have IPsec, or oh, IQ version two IPsec configure. It is not optional. You actually have to. It is mandatory for phase four, which is FlexVPN. And the scope of NHRP, uh, well, NHRP is encapsulated inside GRE. It builds spoke to hub and point to point GRE tunnels, dynamically rebuilds 
of bills hope to spoke and spoke to spoke tunnels, results VPN address to NBMA addresses, and the NBMA addresses are the um, the physical interface IP address that you configure, like on Gigabit 01 or on Gigabit 00, whatever you configure there. Um, that's going to be the NBMA, which is also um, it could be it, it could be like the source of the destination. You are going to, you guys are going to see it whenever I configure, and you're going to see what the NBMA is. And VPN address is none. NBMA address is none. You can look at it like ARP on Ethernet. That's how NSRP works. Where e maps, um, ARP maps a IP address to a MAC address. But for NSRP, what it does is it maps a logical interface, which is a tunnel, with it, which is a GRE tunnel IP address, the logical IP address, to the physical IP address, which is going to be a interface gigabit 00 IP address. So that's how NSRP works. It just maps um, a logical IP address to a physical IP address and well, not to a physical IP address because a physical IP address is a MAC address. Um, it, it just maps a tunnel interface or, or tunnel or GRE tunnel IP address, which is a logical IP address, to a interface IP address like Gigabit 00 or Ethernet 00, whatever IP address configure on those. And the MBMA address, MBM, the MBMA address is the GRE tunnel source address transport, like I said right here. Um, the source address of the uh, the source yet yeah, the source address of the GRE tunnel. That's what the MBMA is. And the let's see. And the um, logical interface is the um, the IP address of the GRE tunnel. So the logical interface that maps it maps to the tunnel source of the uh, of the it maps to the GRE tunnel source address. You guys are going to see on the configuration which is going to make more sense once you guys see it. And the VPN address uh, VPN address is the GRE tunnel level address. Um, so whenever you go interface um, tunnel one and then IP address whatever 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 that's a VPN address. It's a one of the um, on the GRE tunnel which is also called the overlay. And this is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoy uh, this video. Uh, so we went over um, the site-to-site -site, uh, problem and how it is hard to maintain whenever you um, have a lot of branches, offices configured, um, and it is hard to maintain the crypto mask and the pressure key on it. And to resolve that, we go over to the MVPN. Uh, which uses NSRP and there are a couple of deployments of DMV DMVPN deployments you can use hub and spoke and spoke to spoke and I show you guys a picture of the um, spoke to hub and spoke to spoke configuration and I also went over the benefits of using the MVPN that it has a lower configuration and administration and it also uses um, IPsec um, you can add IPsec for encryption, for data encryption, um, confidentiality, integrity, and also for anti-reply protection. And like I said before, that the MVPN uses the Next Hub Resolution Protocol or NSRP, which works just like the ARP protocol. And I went over the NSRP um, scope, which is to dynamically build hope to spoke and spoke to spoke tunnels. So these are, these are for this video, guys. And if you guys enjoyed this video, why don't you just go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNI Daily Tips. And if you don't have a Twitter account, go ahead and create a Twitter account and then follow me on Twitter at CCNI Daily Tips. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Love you.